my second espresso of the day, everybody, as well as my second broadcast. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are watching me from around this great world of ours. It's Kate Richburg, and it is time for Free Tip Friday on BeadShop.com. Uh, today is my um, special takeover for the great bead extravaganza. So welcome to those of you who are watching from over there. Um, it was really uh, great to have all of you all this morning and chatting about bead shop and about all kinds of fun things. So uh, thank you so much for joining me earlier and I am ready. It looks like Janice is also here, which is great. Janice is uh, moderating over on our YouTube channel for beadshop.com and Gita is over on our Facebook page beadshop.com if you have not uh followed us let's let's take care of some business shall we um so we would love it if you would follow us at beadshop.com or facebook uh and not not an or but and our bead group the bead table um we're over almost seven thousand members strong over there Lots of great beady content for the bead shop bead table group. And of course, you can like and subscribe to us over on our beadshop.com YouTube channel. Okay. Um, and of course, you can find uh, the information for the project and the products that I'm going to share with you today right on our website. So you want to sign up for our newsletter for the latest discounts, giveaways, and new products. And if you opened up your newsletter today, you saw there was a bevy of information. Number one, our moon dance kit, which is selling like hotcakes. Another um, group will go in at noon Pacific time today. So if you miss out on that, because um, I think it's almost sold out actually, um, but you can jump on over at noon and grab your kit. There's a limited supply. So if you, uh, miss it, we're not going to remake it. Um, other great kits will come down the line, but that's it for these guys. Okay, so, um, but if you uh, opened your newsletter, you also know that we have a special going on all this month here at Bead Shop. Um, watch the leaves and the prices fall. Uh, you can take 10% off of all orders. There's no minimum. You can use the coupon code AUTUMN10 at checkout. And I'm going to show you, I'm not even show you what they are yet. I'm just going to tell you what to put in at your order. And I'm going to tell you what I'm uh, giving away today. Uh, you're going to, uh, for all orders of $35 or more, I have some crystals. I have some crystals in this kit, but I'm going to give you more crystals. You can kind of see if I hold one up to the screen right here. I'm going to show you these in just a second. Um, but if today on 10 15 21 and you make an order on beadshop.com of 35 dollars and more in the shipping notes add more crystals and what i'm going to give you you guys are these come on now they're from my special sarovsky crystal stash okay um i have you know i have a secret hoard i i do I, I honestly do. And in your kit, you're going to get some that I added to the secret stash, but these from my secret stash, but these are bigger and they're only being given away today. These are what they call Swarovski's modular bead from a few years back, right? This is in crystal golden shadow. The ones that come in your kit are about half an inch long or about 15 millimeters, but these guys, are about three quarters of an inch or about 22 millimeters and they're delish you're going to get four of these when you put more crystals in your order notes i'm going to use them in my piece today i'm going to add them in i've got some other add-ons too but these you know swarovski as you know um is is not really making beads for the trade anymore they're using their beads of course in the jewelry that they create but these special kind of weird one-off um, launches that they used to do um, have probably gone the way of the dodo. Um, and the way that these modular beads fit through, and you'll see they fit together kind of like a peanut bead, if you're familiar with those by Miyuki, right? 
um, you can see they fit together kind of like this and create this beautiful um, kind of um, modular um, component. Um, and you can see the small ones that go in your kit look like look like this. They're a little smaller. So, um, but these are super special. So I have um, uh, an amount set aside for uh, the giveaways today. So again, I'll put this back up. If you place an order today only, October 15th, uh, 2021, create an order of $35 or more, that's $35 after discounts and before your shipping, then add the phrase more crystals in your shipping notes. When we pull your order and pack it, we will pull four of these crystals and put it in today. So it's your gift with purchase today. Okay, so uh, it looks like Janice is doing a little bit of chat in the uh, in the YouTube uh, uh, comments, which is great. And Gita is taking care of everyone from across the miles in our Facebook uh, group or our Facebook page comments. Those of you who are watching from the Great Beat Extravaganza and from the Great Beat Extravaganza YouTube. I'll also see your comments here. So if someone misses something, I'll, I'll try and answer it. But we've got a lot to do them. And Lori's asking, she loves the peanut beads. Any chance we'll get them again? This is it, honestly. I We can't order them anymore. And I've had this secret stash for a while. So they're no longer available um, and certainly no longer available to us. So this is, this is it. This is your chance to grab them. So, um, unless I run across another secret stash, but I don't know. Swarovski is getting, uh, thin on the ground. So let me get another, um, bracing cup, bracing drink here. In my tiny espresso cup, I started using, I've had these espresso cups forever. And if you've ever visited me in my studio, which I know a few of you have, I always offer you an espresso in a tiny cup. So I thought I'd offer myself an espresso in a tiny cup. Oh, the seed bead peanuts, Lori is asking. I don't know, maybe. Uh, we'll chat it. We'll chat it through. I liked those peanuts too, but we've got some new shapes coming. And Hilda, it says you said you placed your order before you knew about the shipping notes. Just email Drea at info at beadshop.com. She'll take care of you. Don't worry. We got gotcha. you. We've got you. So if you missed out on that, just email Drea. She'll add them to your order notes. And when we pull those orders, we won't, um, we won't, uh, we'll add them. Okay. So, uh, all righty. Let me solo this. I have so much to share with you guys today. So first of all, here's the kit. And when you get the kit, it's going to be, well, it's not really a kit. It's a mix. And I always like to call it a kit, but it's not a kit because it doesn't come with everything you need. It's really a Kate's curated bead mix is what it is. And you can see I've got it here on my ultimate design board right in front of me. When you get it, you guys, it comes in a beautiful organza bag and they're all bagged and they're all beautiful. I have dumped them already out on my design board because I can't wait to get my greedy little hands on them. OK, so what you're going to get is you're going to get a bunch of these peanuts in the Swarovski crystal. You're going to get two of these beautifully large and delicious um, lapis um rounds that are about 20 millimeters you're gonna get these are special for the and all of these are mix exclusive we don't have these in uh in stock these are some there we go some ghana um recycled glass in just kind of a light blue and dark blue they're so delicious they didn't have that many so i couldn't get them for stock but i could get them for the kit some of you notice what we call this tides out. It's this uh, wound um, rondelle in cobalt blue. I can't even describe. The camera makes it a little bit darker than it really is. Cobalt is cobalt glass is one of my favorite 
things in a bead. Someday I'll show you. I've got a collection of cobalt glass beads that will never leave my cold little beading hand. Um, but these are so delicious and they feel really um, smooth and beautiful. Um, this is a Java cross bead. These are Indonesian glass and they're made to emulate the old African trade cross beads also in a cobalt, so a really classic design for that. Um, nice big hole, that bicone shape, um, and the shape, it's about, uh, oops, sorry, it's about 30 millimeters in length here, and this really nice big hole, about a, at least a two millimeter, maybe three millimeter hole there. I also grabbed some lapis, not lapis, sorry, labradorite, and the flare on these guys is, um, or chatoyance as it's known, right, is really gorgeous in here. These have a lot of fire in them. So there's a large one at about, uh, also about 30 millimeters by about 25 millimeters. And then these guys, the hole runs down the center. So the way it's seated is, it runs this way. Whoops, sorry about that. I was out of the, the shot. Okay. And then I grabbed some brass. Some of this is Indonesian brass, like this really cool button, and this charm that's meant to represent a conch shell. Some of this is East African, these guys here, these pinwheels. I showed you a sneak peek of these on Wednesday. These beautiful um, brass rings which i love um these ethiopian brass bicones also big love and then these are also um this uh indonesian um the brass here the natural brass so all in all oh and i can't forget my favorite these pearls are just they're about a 10 millimeter pearl with really beautiful luster and I've got this about 15 millimeter inlaid mother of pearl round, which is gorgeous. You only get one of those because there were very, I didn't, my vendor didn't have hardly any number one, so I couldn't get them for stock. And um, they just don't make them like this anymore. This inlaid mother of pearl. It's just gorgeous. I love it. Right. So, um, okay. Uh, so let me show you the things that I'm going to add to this um, when I work on this. Uh, Drea put them on the home page. OK, so I went through our stock and I saw some things I really liked. You can see here these Ethiopian rounds would be a great one to use to add to this mix. I've also got a little dish, this dish made by my buddy Cynthia Thornton from Green Girl. There's a little crow underneath it there. Can you see that crow? Sometimes I use those for beads. You can see it. There it is right there. Chris bought it for me from Cynthia. These are the aged rustic Picasso. <coughs> pardon me, aged rustic mosaic Picasso in four aughts. I'm going to add some of those. I'm going to also, we've got our ovals. You remember our, our ovals, these lapis ovals right here. Gorgeous. You can add those in if you'd like. And the thread, I'm going to use two different threads. And this is kind of a new thing that I'm going to, let me get rid of this so you can see the thread. This is an indigo, the regular Ceylon. You can use any color you want, right? Don't march to my tune, march to your own tune. This is regular and indigo. This is the silk with needle. And I'm going to show you how I use this for my base. I think you're going to really, really love it. OK, it's a I don't know why I haven't done this before, but I'm excited. So you can see with these additions to this mix, you can make an epic piece. Now, let me let me talk to you uh, for just a sec. Right. Um, and um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about designing this piece because I've been thinking about it. I actually even started it and then I cut it up. That's how committed I am to this. I started to think that I wanted to do the macrame portion on this, right, with Irish wax linen, which you could, 
it would be, I did, a, I should have saved the sample. I actually cut it up, but it looks good. But I wanted something a little more polished to be a um, contrast to these kind of rougher brass beads. So for me, it works better. You decide what works better for you, okay? Also length. I've got a lot of beads here, right? I've got a lot of beads going on. So I could string all of these up really, really close like this and just do one of those big single strands like I am, you know, um, into. I like those a lot. But I also figured I could string this long with some macrame in between. And then I could wrap it like I could wrap it around my wrist a bunch of times or I could wrap it twice around my neck. I'd like this piece to be about 21 inches. I know Janice is like, make it a little bit shorter, but I think I would want to layer it. So this layering piece might be a little bit longer. So if I strung it at 42 inches, which if I use the base of my cord here, this is two meters, so I've got plenty. I'll be able to make it really long, use all of these beads and have kind of that macrame, that poetry kind of feel in between. So I could wrap it around my wrist a bunch of times or twice around my neck, if that makes sense. Okay. Now, how am I going to measure this? You're asking. And that's kind of how I was, I was asking it myself this morning. I've got a lot of random beads here, right? But how do I lay them out correctly with also being true to my kind of, I don't really like to lay things out kind of vibe to see how they all go together, okay? And you can stash dive in your stash too. Why not? I'm just seeing, remember when Janice did that maze product project? I have the leftovers from that chakra strand in kind of all of these colors right here. It has some lapis. It has this dark, um, this dark garnet. It has um, some of this adventuring. So this would also work. And I'm sorry if you're hearing this outside. There's some workmen out there, so I'm sorry about that. If it's uh, if you can hear it, hopefully it won't be going on soon. So what I thought of my trusty ball of twine is here. So I'm going to reel off on my twine 42 inches because this is exactly how long I want my necklace to be. I think I have lint on me. It's not. It's stuff that I have. There we go. Let me get it off of my computer screen. I'm all, oh, my gosh, I've got stuff on me. It's my screen. I'm okay. 42 inches. So let me go exactly the length that I want. Let me put on my glasses so I can see. And, oh gosh, my millimeter gauge and my snips, everything is over on my desk. I've got some kind of sad sack scissors here that I'll cut this with. There we go. So here's my length. It's 42 inches. Okay. Now I'm going to get... <clears throat> A nice fat Sharpie marker. Hopefully I've got one here. I do. Here we go. And you could do this and tie knots, but I don't want to tie knots because I've got this length at 42 inches. So you could do this with your thread off the spool and then reel off the 42 after you tie the knots, but I'm not going to do it that way. I'm going to take my, so here's my end. Okay, and I'm going to make my first wrap. Okay, right here. About, that's about right. Now, I'm going to make two marks here. Okay, with my Sharpie. That's about right, right there. I'm going to pinch this in my fingers. And I'm going to make a mark on that. And I could do it with different colors, but I made a mark on my thread.
Now I'm going to wrap it around again. So that's my center. I'm going to come around. Whoops, let me get this. <laughs> let me get this dang scarf off. There we go. All right, that's better. I'm going to wrap this around again. I'm going to see where that mark ends up now. But can you see it? How that mark, I think it's it's here somewhere. I'm going to mark it back. Oh, see? With that scarf, don't do like I do and mark your stuff with that scarf. Because now look where that mark is. It's way over here. So, but that's okay. I'll just know. There we go. That looks good. It's hard to do it in the mirror. That's the, yep. And here's the other one here. There we go. So here's my two strands. So I'm going to mark a couple more. I'm going to do this right here. I'm looking at myself in the computer. There we go. Making that mark. And then back here. Here we go is where the back is. So now I've got this string that has some random marks on it. Okay. And my starter end, I think it was this end right here. I'm going to mark this too. Okay. So now let's look at what's Janice is saying that she gets the dregs. What are you getting? Janice, you're the you're the high boss. What's she saying? Janice is saying, oh, she says, <laughs> that's actually my ball of twine, young lady. That is actually, well, this might actually be yours, Janice, because I also have one that's mine. So uh, I get them mixed up. This one might be yours. I can go get mine, though. <laughs> <laughs> Jen says, she says it again. It's my twine. I'm going to mail it to you. I'm going to mail you this twine so you have it. Okay. So you and this twine will be happy together in your new home. Um, anyway, I have my twine, I think, is up there. Because I use it for thrumming. You guys will have to look that up. It's a metal smithing term. All right. So let's get back to this. So what I can do here is, and I've got my bead design board. If you'll notice, I hurried up and I got the coffee stain out of it. <laughs> you can see, if you were watching earlier, you saw the coffee that was on here. But now, not so much clean. <laughs> Janice is saying that's her symbolic twine. It's true. This ball of twine means a lot. It is. It's our, it's our twine. Um. So here's the, the twine, the piece of thread that I kind of marked, okay? And I can start over here, and I can look for that. Here's my mark. So I can say, oh, I want a big thing there, right? And I'm going along, going along. And so here I'm crossing back around. So I'm bringing this back this way. And I can see this mark over here is the back. So maybe I want to mark the back as something significant. So maybe I'll put those three there. This is another big one. So maybe I'll start and stop the ring right there. And maybe I'll put that brass one there. Okay. And so now I can start to fill in here with my big pieces. And you can kind of lay everything out like this. So it kind of gives you, this is a little tilted, sorry. It kind of gives you a little bit of a road map. It's a loose, loose roadmap, right? But at least, um, 
at least you've got something to kind of go off of, okay? I'm going to, as I show you a couple of techniques that I'm going to do with this, because I want to wrap this up before, uh, before 1130. As I show you a couple of the techniques I'm going to do on this, I'm going to kind of throw this out the window. And when I do actually string it, I'm going to very carefully wrap up my little ball of twine. My mom says, yes, Mark twine. My mom is terribly clever. So yes, the ball of twine is now Mark twine. I think that's hilarious. Um, okay, but it's my mom. So it's what do you think I get my sense of humor? Uh, okay, so let me show you how I'm going to start to string this out. Okay, and Wendy's asking about the beadboard. This is our what we call our ultimate design board, Wendy, here at beadshop.com. We love it. And I know some of you are new who are watching. It couples, and I should have done that, it couples really beautifully with our little um, triangles. These come in uh, packages of 12. So you can stack these triangles all along the top here so you can get all of your beads kind of organized and it makes me feel like a fancy jewelry designer even though i just play one on tv okay so i i like it a lot i really i, I like this one so you can find it it's called the ultimate design board um and they go in and out of stock because we kind of play around uh we, you know we we don't play around we're not here to play, um, but they come in and out. And with um, with supply chain right now, uh, sometimes we are out of stock, but they always come back into stock. So if we're out of them ever, you're watching this and we're out of stock, put yourself on the notification list and you'll get an email as soon as they come back in. Now, uh, there's another question. Lori has a question. Where can I see a finished moon dance necklace? Well, Lori, you're going to see the start of the necklace here, and then I'll post the finished one up on our website when I'm done. Essentially, what I like to do with these curated collections is I like to let you find your path. I'm going to give you some techniques right now um, that you can use to create this piece. And then you're going to go on your merry way. But I promise this will be back up on, on the website so you'll be able to see it. Okay. But it's going to use some of our, um, our um, what do I want to say, stock photo, uh, you know, um, I don't know, tried and true techniques, I guess, is what I want to say. Okay. So let me switch out. I'm going to move this board for now. And we're going to start it with this one, my design tray. Okay. Because again, you could string this. You could string this on soft flex. You can string this on Irish wax linen, just bead to bead, not have any of this in between, you know, macrame in between. But I really want to show you this idea that I've come up with to do like this quasi poetry and if you're looking for the project that this comes from this comes from Janice's poetry project that's a bead shop classic okay so I have my uh, we use the size four I have white because that's what I pulled the other day because I think I had it sitting on my desk but Drea in the pro in the on the home page used this size four um, in the um, natural, the, the beige is what this is called on the website. So that's a number four. And this is indigo in regular. Okay. So what you're going to do here is I'm going to get my button. Now, when I got this button, I was super excited because it had this little knob on it. I just loved it. And then when I realized I went to use it, I was like, oh, that knob kind of gets in the way of what I want to do. So, but it's okay, right? Um, so I'll show you how I'm going to deal with that. So um, just go with me. I'm going to reel off about two yards of the Ceylon in regular. Okay, about that. 
Now, if you wanted to make needles at the end and stiffen the end, you could, but there's no real need to. This edge is a little bit frayed. I'm going to just give it a little clip so it's nice and even here. Okay. Now, the base of this necklace is going to be the size four. You could go up probably to a size six, but the pearls probably fit best on the four. So that's why I use the four. If you're going to pull the pearls out and use them to make a pair of perfect pearl earrings, like I might, look at now I've got pen on my hands, but it doesn't matter. Um, then you could go up a size, but these pearls need a size four silk. Okay. Everything else will fit on a six that I've got here. So I've taken the silk with needle off the card, given it a little bit of a stretch. The needle is here, okay? And I just have the edge of my silk here. The lapis beads, all of this stuff that comes in the curated mix is um, special to the mix. So these are about a 15 to 20 millimeter bead and they're only we don't carry these in the in the shop i i hope to find some you know how much i love lapis but things like this i just can't find them in quantities to sell online right so but i'm i'm still looking don't don't um don't despair so here what i'm going to do is i'm going to get the end of my thread and I'm going to go through the button. And it's just going to go through on one side here. OK, like that. You can see it comes to this side. And then this string, the, the cord that I'm using, I'm going to find the center. And I'm just going to go kind of over that silk, down through the button hole. I love these old cross buttons. I just love them. I'm going to come back up through the hole on the opposite side and then back down on the other side of that little knob. So what I have here is thread that matches on both sides. And this blue cord is covering up that white. You can see it a little bit, but it's covering up that white silk. Now I can just start my macrame here. And if you want, if it's too loosey goosey, and you're having issues or whatever, you can just tie a knot. But I'm going to see if I can successfully show you how I would just start with my macrame. So I'm going to put my, where's my little leash that I made of our Mark Twine? I had it here. Oh, it fell to the ground. Let me get it. So you can see here I make that little loop. I'm going to make sure I could glue these threads in place, but I don't never like gluing if I don't have to. So I'm just going to bring that here. And I'm sorry, you meant the lapis ovals. I'm sorry, the lapis ovals are in the shop and they're in the just in. Yeah, sorry, sorry. I didn't realize I'm so enamored of those. Um, they're also on the home page. If you go right to beadshop.com, you'll find them right on the home page. Um, they're linked there. Okay, sorry about that. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down and I'm going to get just my white thread, my white core thread here on the end and I'm going to clamp that down. Now I've got this little, this little beauty 
this little end and I need to secure it somehow. So I'm also going to come in with my clampers. Clampers we are out of, you guys. And again, it's a supply chain thing. You know all of those cargo ships that are sitting out from Los Angeles Harbor? I bet our clampers are right sitting right there. So we should have them back in soon. Okay? We should. So now let me show you how I've done all of this. I've clamped the silk to my board so it's tight. The silk that's coming around one side of this of these holes comes through and I've clamped that end to the main cord so it's also tight. Because when you are macrame, you guys, the base thread needs to be taut. If it's not, your macrame is going to look like the dog's breakfast, okay? Also, with my little loop here, I need to bring my strands under that loop because I'm going to start to macrame. But I don't want to incorporate this little leash that I used for this button into the macrame. So I need to make sure that it's sitting correctly. So here goes this one. There we go. And here goes this one. <laughs> Christine said she's waving at the cargo ships down there in um, in LA, in Long Beach. Janice also says, and it's true, I've used those in a pinch, that heavy binder clips um, work well as well. So if you don't have those, you can use your binder clips. But we'll have these back in stock soon. I hope, I hope. So you can see, see how I've gotten my uh, threads, my left thread and my right thread underneath. And I'm going to lift, this is a bit big. What am I going to lift with? This, this kind of smaller spool of sealon. Now I'm just going to start to macrame. Okay. Here we go. And you guys stick around because I've got a, a giveaway. After I do this demo, I'm going to give you the, um, the phrase to put in for the giveaway because this month, October, we are celebrating our five years of broadcasting live from beadshop.com. So I've got a whole bunch of giveaways that I'm doing. So today I've got some giveaways lined up. All right. So, so here's our cue right here right i'm with my left strand with my right strand i'm coming over underneath that base strand you can see it's the white and up through that loop pull it up and tighten we've got a skill builder on beadshop.com if you're a regular watcher you've seen me do this a million times if you're new to this go right to beadshop especially to our youtube channel they are right there they're also on our website under skill builders okay so here's the P side with my left strand. I go over that tail, under the center strand, and up through that loop. There's my second half hitch, and I've made a full square knot. I'm going to do a few of these at Kate's speed. Um, okay, so I'm going to go to the left and under and to the right and under and there we go and so you can see there it is i'm going to undo all of this now i'll be able i'm going to actually keep this and it's a good question so someone had a question about the silk amy said she was distracted by my job well amy whatevs ames um were you using silk to strengthen the piece great question and you're going to see why I'm using the silk in just a second. When, if you're familiar with our poetry project, you know that we string a long piece of fine sealon, sometimes micro, depending on the beads. I th thread it through a needle at the end. I bring it up and then the tails come out of the button and that's what I macrame with. OK, so the strand that's underneath the beads is actually a doubled strand. This strand of silk is actually also doubled. It's just twisted. 
So can you see if I untwist the end of this silk? How there's two strands. Doesn't really want to untwist for me today. But there's two strands. There you go. You can kind of see it there. Okay. I did this because it's super convenient because this needle is already on. The silk is nice and strong. Um, and I just wanted to see if it worked well. And I was pretty happy with it. Okay. So I'm going to go under. And this is starting to kind of, you know, it, it's, it's capturing that tail underneath the macrame. Now, if you want, you can add just a tiny bit of GS Hypo right there. Okay. Just a touch. And I'm going to go ahead and macrame over that. Okay. So, and watch our skill builder. I, I just did a new, I did, I did it a, a pre-recording on a free tip Friday a couple of, a few weeks ago now. Um, but it really explains all of those stitches really well. I'm going to come in. Now you could thread burn this thread away, but I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to get a little close to my vision here. I'm going to come in and I'm going to clip away that excess cord being careful to only clip the silk and not these guys. Okay. So now this is ready to go. Okay. So here's my end. So now I need to decide what my first bead is going to be. So uh, I don't know. I've got these small, I've got these two here. I've got these, um, Maybe I'll throw one of these. I don't know. Okay. So um, all that planning with my thread has just gone out the window. These are those rustic aged Picassos that are not included in my mix. This was an add-on. But I'm going to put one of those on. And you can see I can pre-string some of these too. So let me put on that. Let me put on this. Let me put on this labradorite. Let me put on another one of these. And let me put on these. Now, you're going to see, like in poetry, when we do our poetry project, our threads go along the outside of our beads. Hold that thought. I want to take a pause here just really quick and put up the phrase for our giveaways, and then I'll get back to the demo. So time out. Let's go. And if you're watching, you guys, those of you who have done the giveaways before know this, but if you're watching in our Facebook groups, the Great Beat Extravaganza group or the bead table group on Facebook, you need to go to streamyard.com forward slash Facebook and grant StreamYard permission. StreamYard is our is our streaming platform that we use. You need to grant StreamYard permission to see your name because those groups are private, set to private. They're not public. If you're watching anywhere else, our Facebook page, any of the YouTube channels, um, you don't have to do that. Your name shows up. OK, most of you who are commenting, I can see all of your names, but it changes your name from YouTube user to actually your name. So I can see for the giveaway who is winning. OK, who wins? OK, so uh, do that and then enter hashtag beads in the comment comments to enter our giveaway. And I'll show you what these are when we do the drawing. I've got some here. I'm going to give away three things because we're celebrating all month long, five years of broadcasting right here from beadshop.com every Wednesday and Friday at 1030 a.m. Pacific, 1030, 11, 30, 12, 1.30 p.m. Eastern. There we go. So add hashtag beads 
Okay, and the giveaway entries, just so you know, are accepted on this live broadcast on 10, 15, 21 only. Um, we're going to give them away live. Okay. <clears throat> so let me get back to this. Let me make sure. Yep, everybody's looking good. I can see everybody's name. We are gathering those entrances. Excellent. Someone said, Sarah, not to not to uh, uh, point you out, but I know you want to win. And it's not beds, it's beads. So go ahead, hashtag beads. Easily done. <laughs> Ask my mom, who's the world's worst speller? Me. Sometimes a little slip of the fingers on the keyboard. So there you go. All right, let's get back to this. Now back to our regularly scheduled demo. And then I will uh, pull a name uh, in just a few moments. So uh, here it is. So I pre-strung. I've strung some of these up, OK? And I'm going to come in, and I'm going to reconnect this thread so it's taut again here with my clamper. Now I'm just going to come in, and along the outside here, I'm going to bring my strands. Let's see if I can even get closer. There we go. I'm going to bring my strands around. And I'm just going to macrame around this bead, just like I did previously. But the bead is now captured, just like we did in our poetry project. OK. Bam. There you are. And then <clears throat> this is when that string that I made, you guys, really comes in handy because you can kind of lay all these out and kind of figure out how many bits of macrame, stitches of macrame, you want to put in between, right? You might want to do them fairly close. You might want to do them a little further away if you have adding extra beads in here. This is when you decide what you want your length to be. But look at how nice this regular sealon just looks prime, I think, with this. Now, beads that have a large hole, you can see this big shadow bead that I included in this mix has a big hole. You can see that. So if you want your threads to not go around your bead but go through the hole, and this is where putting zap on the ends of these might be helpful. So it stiffens them. But I'm not going to take the time to do that today. You can put your threads through. <clears throat> Make sure you're not twisting them up. There we go. You can put your threads through the bead, slide the bead up. And then just continue your macrame underneath. See that there? Like that. Some beads, you won't be able to do that. OK? Um, you'll want to, um, like this. We're getting back to this pearl. It has such a small hole. I'll put the pearl on so you can see it. But obviously, you could only get the silk running through here. Um, it's not something that, you know, Karen, this is such a huge question. When would you use silk versus other types of thread, nylon, etc.? We have a really great guide on our website under our skill builders. We have a, um, a, a guide on thread, what thread to use. We have a guide on what needles to use. And they're all on, if you go to beadshop.com under learning, you'll see all of those guides there. And they'll be super helpful for you. Um, I'll do another basics show, um, which I think would be fun for everyone. Um, I'll, I'll put that on the, on the calendar just so we talk about this again. This is a uh, indigo Ceylon right here. Now, so I'm going to bring this thread over the front of this, okay? 
Now, you'll remember in your stitches, when you learned this flat stitch, you also learned the spiral stitch and the spiral flat knot, you do all in one direction to make it spiral, right? What I want is I want this thread to spiral just a touch. So see how my little my little loop where I ended up this little sorry about that this little kind of scallop here. I'm going to tie that means I made the loop and tied to the left. I'm going to make the loop and tie to the left one more time and it's going to bring my thread from the side here to the front here. Melanie is asking if the strands will go through that bead. They won't, actually. Um, it's just too, too small. Too small for that. Okay. So um, this hole is just too, too, too tiny for that. So I'm going to do one more in that same direction and see how it's bringing. I'm going to do actually one more of those. I'm going to do two. And it's going to bring my thread, there we go, to the center. See that? Now I'm going to slide up that labradorite. And now I'm just going to continue with my regularly scheduled programming, right? I'm just going to come in, tie that knot, and then I'm going to go back and forth and do the uh, left hand, right hand half hitch knots, and it'll bring everything back into the flat square knot. So that was on the left. This one will be on the right. But it keeps this um, <clears throat> bead, the thread, right in the center of that bead. See, there we go, and we're just continuing on. But it sits nice and flat. What did I just do on that side? I think I did it on the right. Yeah. I mean, sorry, I looped it on the right, so now I'm going to loop on the left. I think. I don't know. We'll see. You guys will tell me. Yeah, that looks correct. Did you see how I just brought in the awl there? Did you see how I used my awl to open up that knot really quickly? If you, if you macrame and you don't have an awl, I don't know what the heck you're waiting for. We carry them here at Bead Shop, of course. They are super handy and not expensive. So I think you'll really use it. I love mine. So see how this is shaping up? Now I'm going to slide these guys up. Well, maybe I'll do two more. I've got a little bit of time. I actually can go a little bit longer because we're not putting that second round of Kate's curated mixes in until noon. So I've got a few minutes. I keep thinking that I have to end by 1130, but you guys will hang, hang in with me. So I'm going to bring these guys up. And Judy's asking, is that the same awl you use to string pearls? Yes, Judy, if you use an awl for pearl stringing, it's probably the same. Here at Bead Shop, we show a whole bunch of different ways to string pearls. And if you go to, again, our learning section, you'll be able to find a handout where Janice teaches you her famous no tool method, which is the one that I use. But sometimes I use a knotting tweezer or an awl. But if you have an awl already, then you're in good shape. One awl to rule them all, literally. Okay, so see how I've come down inside these, um, these what we call the tides out, the, the recycled glass rondelle. Now I'm just going to continue on like so. Now, I know you guys are wondering about the ring. Kate, how are you going to use this 
gigantic ring in the piece. Well, I'm going to show you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use that as a stopper. I'm going to show you a couple of ways to do it. Okay. And I'm going to do mostly talk and describe, but I think you'll get the hang of it. I'm a fast macrame or this is a Kate macrame speed. Okay. So what I would do is I will macrame, macrame, macrame until I want to add this ring. Now there's a couple of things you could do with this. I could continue to macrame and then pull that macrame through the ring, come back down and macrame over this previous bit of macrame that I've got here. Okay. I could also, with these small four aughts, the four aughts don't come in the mix. They are an add-on. You'll see them on the home page of the bead shop website. Or you don't have to use these. You could use any small beads that you might have hanging around, right? I'm going to use one of my shadows here, my big shadows first. Then I'm going to put on one, two, easier said than done, one, two, three, four, five. Let's see what this looks like. <clears throat> I'm going to bring this through. I just want to give you some options. What I would do. I don't really know. I could just end it here, you know, and I could glue my macrame down. Or these beads are all large enough. I could pass them through here and wrap them around. Either way. But let me see what this loop looks like. You know me, I like to make this stuff up as I go along. Creativity <clears throat> and necessity fuels invention, right? So there we go. I'm going to need a few more beads on here. That's not quite right. But can you see how I've made a loop with these beads? I could also wire wrap it and loop through the wire wrap. But then I could, what I would do here is... I would pull, whoops, whoops, sorry about that. I had a call, sorry, sorry. Um, <clears throat> I thought I had this on do not disturb, but I guess I don't, let me, there we go, pull that down. Um, I could kind of pull this down like this and macrame that little space closed. What I think I will do though, I think that's, cleanest because I don't want to distract from this really beautiful loop is I just macrame <clears throat> and so as I macrame down circle bronze would also look nice but remember these guys are add-ons they're not in the mix these small ones but you could go stash diving. I think this mix is a really good base for you to add like the ones and twos of your special pieces in your stash. Like I told you I have that leftover stuff that Janice sent from her maze um, piece. Um, <clears throat> the rest of that chakra strand that she didn't use in there. Those would look terrific in here. I love to see your creativity. The pieces in this mix, this curated mix, um, are kind of hard to find. I really worked on this a while, trying to find some really unique and interesting things. So you get a lot of cool stuff in here, um, but it's really great for you to also, um, you know, add on what you like. So once I've macrameed all the way around, I need to make this a little bit longer. <clears throat> 
but I'll macrame all the way around here and then macrame down um, and then glue my macrame nicely right here. Okay, so that's it. That's what I would do. And then I would start again. I would put this thread through, start it just like I did up here with the button. Okay, bring it through. Um, macrame a little bit over the top of this, right? Then bring that macrame section through and then double this down, macrame, 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 and then start this macrame over the single strand. Okay. So that would work beautifully. I also have, uh, I wanted to show you these, these guys, those um, modular beads that I have for you from Swarovski. The holes in these, you guys, are really big. So I will be able to get both strands of my regular Ceylon through, okay? So you can do this with all of these, whoops, go through, there we go. <clears throat> you can do these with all of these and these will just stack up just like that. I'll stack them. Now remember, you guys, for the giveaway that I have today, giveaway with purchase, I have these large ones. So when you place an order, you can, of $35 or more, in your order notes, put the phrase, more crystals in the order notes of your beadshop.com order. It's for today only. And I'll add those four delicious larger modular beads for you um, in, your, in your order. My little gift from my Swarovski crystal stash to yours. Uh, and they're so different. They're such a, an interesting shape. And when these pull together on their own, I don't, I'll be honest, I don't love them as much. But when you click them into place together, it just makes this little component. It looks like an everlasting gobstopper from Willy Wonka, I feel like. I would put three of them together or two, whatever it is you like, okay? So that's these guys for the giveaway. These are in your mix. Okay. <clears throat> Let me look at the comments over here. All right. So now um, we have so many of you. I really want to thank so many of you from join, for joining me from all over the web today. We have over 200 people watching, which is just really incredible. I'm going to not solo this for the moment. Um, so now let's do the giveaways, shall we? The live on-air giveaways. So make sure that you have added <clears throat> your hashtag beads in the comments to enter. Wherever you're watching, They'll our program will pull them all. I've got three for you today because, again, we're celebrating five years of broadcasting live here at beadshop.com. And I'll tell you, when I came back to Beadshop in 2016, it was really my motive. I was like, I'm gonna start a live online broadcast to reach everybody all over the world. And look, if you think of it, if you manifest it in your brain, it will happen. And it is, look at you. You're watching from all over, all over the world. I'm so gratified. So, <clears throat> I've got three. Did I say three? Number one, what I have for you is this strand of freshwater pearls, also out of my stash. A beautiful iris strand, 16 inches. I've got that. That will be giveaway number one. Giveaway number two is I've got one left over. 
actually found it in my desk. Of the Kate's birthday gemstone mix, those little tiny gemstones, two and a half millimeters. And you know we carry the Chinese knotting cord. It's my favorite in the silver. This is giveaway number two. Giveaway number three today. Janice always laughs at my giveaways. I just think it's fun because it's not a party if we don't have party favors. I also went into my stash. I got this really cool Celadon color of Esalon when we were doing those Esalon giveaways. So I had one of those. I have a couple of strands. This was from like one of my mixes that I've done. I don't know. Um, these were these were fun. So I have a six millimeter fire polish and a four millimeter etched druck. We'll go in that. And remember the button from that mix that cure, I think it was a curated kit that I did. Remember that button? I have one left. I don't want to give it to you. I want to keep it for my very own. But, but it's good. Okay. So we're all set. So that's giveaway number three. Okay, the jewelry box mix. Yes, that might have been what these were from. Okay, so <clears throat> a druck is another word for round beads. It's an old school bead world word, um, meaning round bead with a hole. That's it. Just a plain round bead is called a druck. So I've got three. Giveaway number three, giveaway door number two is right here, and door number three. And I've got my pad and my pencil, and I am ready to see what our automatic um, winner picker, <laughs> it's not really the thing, uh, uh, who they choose. So let me go ahead and get my giveaway tab up. There it is. We have 172 entries. So let us draw. Let me make this a little bit bigger. Let's draw our first winner. For number one, this is for the pearls here. Mare Vaz, watching on one of our YouTube channels. Mare, what you are going to do is, all of you are going to do when you win, you are going to email your mailing information to info at beadshop.com. Okay, so this is for Mare. I'm writing myself a note. Let's go to drawing number two. Where is my, there it is. Okay, let's draw again. For number two, this is for the, the gemstones and the silver um, CKC. Laura B. Also watching on a YouTube platform. Laura, email your mailing information to info at beadshop.com and we'll get this right out. Congratulations. And let's go with number three. Heather Bell, watching on one of the Facebook platforms. Heather, you're winner number three. There we go. Putting the post-it on your winnings. Email us. And I will get that right out to you. Okay. Let me... Uh, Spotlight me here. What a show. It was pretty good, if I do say so myself. Giveaway is a 
demos and a curated mix. We got it all. Also, so I wanted to remind you guys, uh, all October here at Bead Shop, we have an automatic coupon code. It's not automatic, but it's it's up on the website with no minimum, you can take 10% off all of your orders. Use coupon code AUTUMN10 at checkout. It'll knock 10% off. But do, um, if you have not already, I want you to go to beadshop.com and sign up for our newsletter because our newsletter has special offers, the mix giveaway uh, that we had today, right? The giveaway with purchase. Um, you'll be the first to know about what's happening bead shop wise right and in today's newsletter you saw that we have a giveaway with purchase you create an order of 35 dollars or more and add the phrase more crystals in your shipping notes and you will um, get these really fantastic crystals added to your order okay um, also, don't forget to follow us on all of our social media at beadshop.com, Facebook, our Facebook group called The Bead Table, and like and hit that subscribe button if you're watching live or if you're watching on replay um, at beadshop.com. Uh, it really helps when you like and share these broadcasts so we can get the bead love out to as many people as we can. We really, really appreciate it because you guys, without you, being out there and supporting us in our little small business here that has been going on since 1982. Um, we really, really uh, appreciate that support. So without you, we would not be here. So lots of luck to Janice this weekend on her move as she moves uh, not too far away, house and home where she is now. Um, but do join me every Wednesday and Friday at 10.30 a.m. Pacific, 1.30 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, you can uh, join me for all of these live broadcasts and hopefully you're learning something new. So, <clears throat> pardon me. Uh, keep an eye on the Great Beat Extravaganza Facebook group for the rest of the shenanigans that I have up and running today. Um, I would love to see you there. And I will see you next Wednesday for another fantastic broadcast. And stay creative, everybody. Have a fantastic weekend. And I'll see you next Wednesday. Thanks so much, everybody. Oh, and just a reminder. The kits will be uh, going back in at 12 noon, the rest of the Moon Dance kits. So uh, not kits, but curated collections. So if you want to grab those, uh, don't delay um, because they will sell out. All right. Thanks all. See you next week.